Hello, and welcome. Do you believe that God has someone special for everyone? That your future significant other is being prepared by God just for you, destiny, if you will. Or maybe you think it's a little bit more random, that we get to choose whoever we want to be with and the chips fall where they may. Or what if the truth of this question is actually different than what you thought? How would that change your perspective in your heart towards the purpose of marriage? Well, fortunately for us, Jesus went pretty hard on this a couple of times in the gospel, and in doing so, gave us a revelation about something a little different that might be even more valuable. In Matthew 22, the Sadducees, a religious elite, approached Jesus and gave him a riddle. They said, Jesus, if a woman marries a man and he has six brothers and he dies, as is custom, she would marry another brother. What happens if the brothers keep dying and she keeps marrying the other brothers and then one day they all get to heaven in the next stage in the resurrection? Whose arms is she going to run into? Whose wife is she going to be? And Jesus said, you guys clearly don't read the Bible <laughs> and you clearly don't understand the power of God because in the next stage, there is not going to be any marriage. We're not going to be doing this uh, fleshly thing, this natural thing of marriage coming together in this way. We'll be much more like spiritual beings that don't really do this. Well, what was he talking about? We got to fast forward a little bit to Ephesians 5, when Paul was writing a letter to the church of Ephesus, giving them marital advice, saying, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. What does this all mean? Well, right after he said that, he had a little parenthetical. We're saying, you know what, but, but all this marriage advice I'm giving you, all we're, everything we're doing here with marriage is designed to basically tell us what uh, Christ and his church will ultimately become when we're all one with each other and one with God. And so what we need to learn from this is that marriage is a very natural fleshly thing in this age. It's like it is a sacrament that is like the uh, old school animal sacrifices that were pointing to something greater, a gift that God has given to a fallen humanity, to a flawed humankind, to give us a taste in our flawed state of what true commitment, to what true love, to what purpose and potential can come from it, and to point us to the ideal and what our thoughts should be when we approach our relationship with the church. Now, you know, what's interesting is you would think that if that's the case, then wouldn't God want everyone to experience the covenant of marriage? Well, not exactly. It doesn't appear that is true when it comes to the new covenant. Let's go ahead and look at another time that Jesus spoke with the Pharisees about marriage in Matthew 19. Jesus walked up and down Israel saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand and now is here. And the Pharisees came up to him and said, Jesus, we got a question for you. Can a man divorce his wife for just any old reason? We know that in the Old Testament law that Moses said that a man could divorce his wife if she displeased him. What does this displeasure mean? Is it, is it marital unfaithfulness? Is it any old reason? What do you say, Jesus? Jesus again told them, you clearly don't read the Bible. Let's go back to Genesis before the law and see where God said a man will leave his father and mother and be joined with his wife the two will become one flesh. Now that word flesh is again, this natural thing of marriage. And his disciples right after that said, well, then how could anybody get married? Again, they were focused on themselves. And before I tell you what Jesus said to them, let's go back to that place in Genesis that he was quoting and see what other verse is right next to that. It says, to be fruitful, multiply, fill up the earth, take dominion, and implicitly do so in God's image. You're probably like, Dan, we understand how that's done. That makes total sense but not so fast. Let's see what Jesus said to his disciples. He said, you're right. Marriage is very, very hard and it's not for everyone. But if you should do it, yeah, you should do it. Because if, if you can, we, we of course need to multiply the human race. But some people are born eunuchs. They are therefore not able to. They don't have the physical or mental capabilities to be able to enter into a healthy marriage covenant as God intended. Then he went on to say that, you know what, other people are made eunuchs by others. In other words, they are harmed by society to such an extent that they can no longer enter into a healthy marriage relationship with someone else. And so what he's saying is, is that there are going to be people who forego participating in the signpost that is marriage because they don't want it to get distracted by their participation in the real thing, the true family of God that marriage is pointing us towards and teaching us about. And this should blow our minds because then when we go back to that verse in Genesis and say that we should be fruitful, multiply, fill up the earth and take dominion in God's image, that Jesus, the perfect human, 
did this in a totally different way than maybe we thought that that verse was applying to, that he prioritized the spiritual meaning of that, of making disciples and edifying his body. And I'm not saying you shouldn't pursue marriage. If you're single, pursue marriage, but first pursue your participation in the family of God and multiplying and edifying and making disciples within the church because what's funny is that activity will transform you in a way that will make you the most attractive version of yourself, one that would be most likely to attract the kind of person you want to spend the rest of your life with, whether it be friends, family, or a significant other, a spouse. And I don't know if my generation is going to be able to receive this, but I know our children will or their grandchildren will because God is marching his church forward to maturity as he said. It's destiny, if you will. You guys, I hope this helps. I'm praying for you. I hope you're praying for me, and I'll see you next time.